Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on the Arrowverse as a whole. Today we have some news in regards to three different things. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any future DC TV videos later this year. So, as I just said, we have three different things to talk about. One is an update about an upcoming Arrowverse show that is in development. One is the head of the CW actually commenting on the big changes that have been happening. Also, we have the 2022 to 2023 schedule for the CW and their programming, which definitely teases some big changes for some of our shows. So please be sure to stick around throughout the entire video because we're going to be breaking it down and talking about everything that we need to. The first thing we're going to be talking about is the schedule changes that are coming this year and next year for the CW. So this fall, the only CW Arrowverse show that we have is Stargirl. And why is this? So Stargirl is coming on Wednesday and it's going to be in the 8 to 9 p.m. time slot which is a new night for Stargirl. However, there is literally no other Arrowverse show that is going to be on in the fall. Like, Stargirl is the only one. So you have other shows like The Winchesters, Professionals, All-American, and then the All-American spin-off, Walker, the Walker spin-off, and then just like a random bunch of other shows on other nights, and Stargirl is literally the only one. Well, the main reason is because they are actually moving a lot of the other main Arrowverse shows up till the mid-season. And you have to take into account Legends isn't going to be on, Batwoman isn't going to be on, Naomi isn't going to be on. And if they were still on, I'm sure one of those shows would have, you know, occupied a similar time slot to Stargirl. However, that's not the case. We are very limited as to the shows that we have left. So... In regards to the shows that we do have left, we have The Flash and Superman and Lois. What are going to be happening to those shows? Well, it's been announced that they are actually moving to mid-season. They're going to be premiering in 2023. So that means once The Flash and Superman and Lois finish airing their episodes for this year at the end of this month, at the end of June, that means we're not going to be seeing any more Arrowverse episodes apart from Stargirl until next year. So that is a very, very long break. The mid-season normally means January. That's normally when they will premiere their episodes. So look forward to that. At least we don't have to wait, like, I don't know, a couple of months into the next year. However, that means from the end of June, we're not going to be, you know, just waiting until the fall, until October, and then, you know, being like, oh yeah, The Flash is back, or Superman Lois is back. No. That isn't the case this time, and that's to be expected for Superman and Lois, because as we've all experienced this year, we know that Superman and Lois takes a long, long time to film, and it just hasn't been working out in terms of, like, trying to keep to that schedule. So, giving Superman and Lois the time to actually have those episodes to crank them out, and giving them, like, extra time, it's definitely a good thing that they're doing there. However, with The Flash, I think they just kind of want to break... I think, you know, we're approaching the last couple of seasons of The Flash, so they're basically not trying to rush everything. And I think with the CW doing this change with The Flash coming in January, I think that's just giving themselves some more time to think about the storylines and to actually film it and give, you know, everyone some time off, I guess. So that is, you know, some big news that has been announced in the last couple of weeks or so. I just now got around to talking about it. I am definitely looking forward to The Flash and Superman and Lois' new seasons when they do come out. But it's a shame that we do have to wait for such a long time because it is a very long time from, you know, say you have July, August, September, October, November, December, and then you go into January. That's literally a six-month break. That is a pretty long break, if I'm being completely honest. However, you know, it's The Flash, it's Superman and Lois. It's going to be great when they come back on and... We all look forward to that. Okay, so let's move on to the next bit. We're going to be talking about an update in regards to one of the future Arrowverse shows that has been teased and that is currently in development. So this is coming from TV Line, and TV Line were asked a question by one of their fans. This was their question. Is there any word on the CW's Justice U show starring David Ramsey? I know the network is in a bit of a flux right now, but I am hoping the show is not officially dead as it seemed like an interesting way to continue Diggle's story. So, 
they say, that being TV line, they say, you should dig this news, Brian, as I'm told that Justice U is still in development at the network. So that is our big update as of right now. That is the first time we've had an update since all the big CW cancellations, which obviously shocked everyone in the last month or so. And so with this news of potentially Justice U still coming, that's just absolutely amazing to hear because we've seen the Gotham Knights trailer. I'm actually going to discuss the Gotham Knights trailer briefly at the end of this video. But with Justice U, it basically promises, you know, a classic old school Arrowverse show that is going to be basically a spin off of Arrow because it is David Ramsey's Diggle. He's going to be leading the show, but then it's going to be slightly different because it's going to be a kind of team up show. He's going to be teaching a group of younger heroes and he's just going to be leading the show as kind of the main lead and maybe eventually down the line the younger heroes will take over but for now it's just really great to hear that the show is currently in development they are still going ahead with it however this isn't to say this is 100% going to be coming because they're still in the early stages of development and with the CW in this big flux that it's in right now as the question actually stated we don't know if those new people are going to come in, they're going to be like, oh, we don't like what we're seeing with Justice U, so we're not going to go with it. And maybe they'll start to bring in some different shows that are more along the lines of what they want. Or it very much so could be just exactly what they want, and they think maybe a spin-off off of Arrow would definitely work. But we'll just have to wait and see. So let's move on to the next bit of the video. So this is the second to last thing that I want to talk about. So this is some comments from Mark Pedowitz, the head of the CW, and this is in response to the cancellations. This is again a TV Line article, which will be linked in the description below. So the first answer that Mark Pedowitz gives is this, I realize the pattern is different from what we've done in years past, so I can see why this came as a bit of a shock to you and to the fans, Pedowitz told reporters. He goes on to say, look, none of these were easy decisions. We had long conversations with our studios and parent companies and everyone recognized that this was a time of transition for the CW, so unfortunately some difficult financial and strategic decisions needed to be made at every level. He goes on to say, despite some of the rumors out there, I want to be very clear, content was never a factor in deciding not to move forward with a show, Pedowitz maintained. He goes on to say, we are very proud of the stories we told to the producers and writers who created those shows and all the talent that we're fortunate to have had on this network. I've always been a bastion of giving a long running series a proper ending so our creatives can finish telling the stories on their own terms and the fans who invested all of this time would be hopefully satisfied. We also tried to do that this year. Pedowitz went on to explain that CW went into this year with a general idea of what shows could be bubble shows, but they did not know 100% what was going to happen so we encourage all of those producers to treat their finales as they could be series finales and then he goes on to say we wanted to do the right thing by the series and by the fans ultimately the producers are stewards of their own creative visions they are storytellers we at the CW always strive to be collaborative and provide guidance and direction unfortunately sometimes there are fans that lose out by these decisions and that I empathize is never anyone's intention. So that is what he had to say about the cancelled shows. And I have to say, I understand where he's coming from. However, they didn't fight hard enough to give those proper endings. And despite their warnings to certain producers of certain shows, probably like Batwoman, Naomi and Legends, they did not actually follow through with what Mark is actually saying here, like saying that you know they wanted to give shows proper endings and stuff so why cancel them why not just end them be like okay your show isn't producing the kind of response or reactions that we want and the CW and you know our higher ups are kind of worried about you know the business side of things so okay we're gonna end the show let's agree to end it because you know there's always a possibility that they want to cancel you down the line so why didn't he do that? I have no idea and that's, you know, his own mistake or, you know, the people who are controlling, you know, the relationships between the producers and the writers and stuff like that. 
So, yeah, I don't know. That is a big kind of iffy stain on Mark Pedowitz's track record and sort of history with the CW as the lead of the network. So, yeah, what do you guys think of that? Let me know down in the comments below. But now we're going to briefly talk about Gotham Knights and the new trailer that was released, or in fact, the first look trailer. It's quite a long trailer, in fact. It's like three minutes long, and you guys have seen online, it garnered some very interesting reactions. So, I'm gonna have to say, I fall into the same kind of field that a lot of others that I saw online are in. And that is, I don't think Gotham Knights looks very good. I think it looks literally very stereotypical for the CW. It looks like Riverdale meets Batwoman, but not even Batwoman in the sense that, you know, it's like Batwoman. It doesn't look like Batwoman. Instead, it looks like they're using the kind of Batwoman and Batman characters, but it's kind of your Riverdale version of that. And I think that's just because, like, the cast is so young, so kind of teenagery, like Riverdale, and it just doesn't look very good. And the story doesn't seem that interesting, and it's a little bit unbelievable with, like, all of these kids kind of running around. And that's why it kind of reminds of Riverdale in some way. And I, I like Riverdale, and that makes more sense that that show is like it is because that is about school kids and this is supposed to be about superheroes and like there's no superhero costumes in this trailer at all there's no like batmobile and it's just like very cheesy overall like when robin shows up she's like batman used to call me my little robin i was his eyes and ears and then i don't know like what do you think about that just some of the lines in this trailer like especially at the start of the trailer when they're all kind of like partying in bruce wayne's mansion and then it's revealed that batman has been murdered i don't know i just don't really buy it i feel like it feels very false it feels like it's very staged and i don't think it was worth sacrificing batwoman for a show like this and you have to remember most of the writers and the producers behind this show are actually from batwoman so i'm just wondering what they think in this whole time were they aware that batwoman was going to go away and probably get cancelled so they're like okay let's continue this kind of batwoman and batman legacy but do something quite different like and go for this kind of young adult vibe i guess I don't know what they were thinking, but that is what they went for in the end, and we'll see how the episodes are when they eventually come out. But for now, not that impressed. I don't think many people were impressed, and we'll just have to wait and see how it actually pans out. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. Also, you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.